Zero. Oh, we're alive. Yes, we're sir, live. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the channel. It's all right, man. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, it's, you were the first video, the first two videos I made, in fact, and for various reasons, neither of us were um, were, were that happy with them. But, um, right. So oh. we're going to talk today about about immigration and mental health. If that's if that's cool with you. It's good with You're me. Not, yeah. um, you're not a self-proclaimed expert on it, but you've seen a lot of it firsthand and you travel very widely. Yeah. Yeah, so I um I can't I can't profess to be any kind of real expert on this matter, but it's more kind of anecdotal experience uh that okay. I'm that I'd probably be drawing from, if you know what I mean. But you yourself grew up from so just quick a quick uh a twenty second summary of your whole life. Um you're from, <laughs> from Somalia. In East Africa, you, you lived in Hull in North England. You lived in Bristol. You lived in Cardiff. Lived in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've um, seen well, I'm... after you, man. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just Skype's dodgy, but we're just going to have to take it in turn. So you've you've seen this from lots of angles. So what is immigration? Well, I mean, I think I think. Um... Just to come back to that on, on, on the whole origins thing as well. Um, uh, I think, I think um, I, I'm a product of immigration in many respects, right? So, um, you know, I'm from, a, uh, from a mixed racial background, right? Of, you know, like I've uh, got Irish, an Irish gran. Um, yeah. And uh, growing up in Hull, where I didn't really have access to uh, like a, a kind of uh, ethnic minority community within Britain meant that like all my friends were yeah. kind of, you know, white British really. Do you know what I mean? It's not like um, if you grow up in, in kind of one of the more bigger inner city areas where you might have access to like, a, a kind of uh, a, a more broad uh, kind of cultural framework. It was, it was quite, you know, monocultural in whole for all of us really wasn't it yeah um so like immigration i mean um my granddad came to the uk in the 50s right as a as a student um he was from quite an affluent background back in uh back in somalia though he was born in ethiopia right so yeah um about a third of the Ethiopia of the present Ethiopian territory is inhabited by Somalis, but the British in the uh, I believe it was 1948. Don't fact check me because my memory is shot to shit. Can I swear on this channel? Is that all right, Rob? Uh, I, I'm, I'm offended you haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, is is when when your kids start to get old enough to be able to check you. You kind of have to watch your own language, you know. Um, How do you, so, you, so, so, what do you mean? Well, I mean, my daughter's like, you know, Dad, you shouldn't say that. Dad, that's bad. Dad, that's naughty. So, you know, I need to fix up, and I'm trying my best. You've been spouting out the um, spouting out the uh, EDL rhetoric again. Say so, <laughs> something like that, maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so I, your, granddad I mean, came here. your granddad came here. My grand, yeah. So he, he was basically born in Ethiopia, in in what in what was Somali territory, yeah. Yeah. But was given to the Ethiopians, right? Now right. he was a landowner, right? Had shitloads of houses, camel. You know, he was he was well off. And then everything that they owned was transferred to Ethiopian ownership, right? right so, right. I mean, you need to ask the queen that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know why. Um, <laughs> it's just one of them post-colonial things, right? So, yeah. um, anyhow, you know, he was he was well off. Not everyone was. Um, back in those days, but he, he was from a pretty well-off family. Ended up going to Djibouti, which was under French uh, colonial rule, and uh, learned to speak French, went to French school, 
studied in France for ages, and then came to England, all right, and uh, to visit his cousin, who he was told lived in Hull, actually lived in Cardiff. Just to clarify, Hull is in North East England, quite near Leeds, people who don't know the area in Cardiff, capital of Wales. Sorry, carry on. City of Culture won it, 2017. Isn't that how we should be starting off when we're describing Hull? Um, the, if, it wasn't a, if it wasn't a Grammy. And like, what was it? Uh, what's his name? William Wilberforce? <laughs> yeah, um, one of the guys from The Good Gentleman, yeah, David Bowie's backing band, um, William Wilberforce, um, and most importantly, Fat Boys Slim. Correct me if I'm wrong, does he have any links to Hull? Who? Brian May, Queen guitarist. He's, he's president of the Royal Society for the Pro Protection of Rats, or the Preservation of Rats, but I don't know if he's from the Hull. I imagine not with that hair, but you never know. Um, I mean, that would kind of, that would trump everybody else, really, wouldn't it? If you've got Brian May from Hull, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, <laughs> it's almost as cool as, as Bowie, yeah. But Bowie was for, from, from London. So, so we right, sidelined you again. So where that's going to happen a lot, though, Rob. Because oh. you know, yeah, <laughs> people people enjoy it. Though. People enjoy it. Well, it can they can switch off if they don't. Yeah, and there's no there's no limits to our conversation off camera. Um, but just for the sake of our society and legal status, they, they probably are they probably are on camera system. <laughs> So you gave us a bit of a fleshing out of your what led you to to be here. So what what is what is integration in the context of immigration? So here we are. Let, let me give you. Let me, I'm, I'm I'm going the long way around, man. I'm being I'm being as convoluted as possible. No rush. No rush. You have to forgive me for that because I think sometimes some of the problems that I think people facing understanding from from all walks of life and from all kind of ethnic backgrounds um when it comes to uh, modern life in 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 europe or in the west or wherever um is an, an inability to contextualize how we got here in the first place right you know like if if you're if you're just looking at the picture now and thinking like okay well what you know a bomb's gone off somewhere and, and you know, you're trying to, you're trying to work out why. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very, you know, you, that sort of shit is never justifiable. Right. But context is important. It's important course, yeah. to understand, you know, how, how have we arrived at this point? Because there's no, there's no remedy without an understanding of and exactly what's going on. Right. And, I think the point I'm trying to make, and I'll I'll try and shorten it, was before colonization. Yeah, you know the people had their own problems. I'm sure, like most, I'm sure there's lots of tribes in East Africa that didn't like my granddad's tribe for all the shit they had, right? Mm. But then, like a bigger kid enters the playground and takes everybody's marbles, yeah. right? Now we still live in the shadow of decisions made 100, 200 years ago. There's no escaping that. Right? When that Can you unpack colonialism a little bit? Um, well, I mean, sort of in, in the late 1900s, um, yeah. the, the great powers of Europe um, carved up the world, right? Particularly Africa, um, East Asia. I mean, 1800, late 1800s. So, yeah, I mean, um, kind of, it, it was it'd been going on for a lot longer than that, but the there was a mad rush in the kind of 1880s, 1890s, and um, borders were drawn where they weren't before, mm. and resources were stripped, people were disenfranchised, a lot of good shit happened. Yeah, uh, let's not let's not get it twisted a lot of really good shit happened as well. You know, institutions were built and, um, uh, in, in, you know, a kind of a, a framework for the future development of democratic institutions and, and uh, 
a, a human rights framework was developed as well. But like, you know, you can't escape the kind of the the, the darker side of, of that of that period in time. And then in the yeah. in the 60s, there was a a drive to give back the independence. The only problem is you can't you, you can't give back. You can't return a change state to a, a, a previous state, right? Um, I, I don't mean much sense, man. And, and please forgive me. I'm not getting a lot of sleep at the moment, but um, it's very difficult to restore something to its original state, right? Once it's been through a process of transformation, and the lines that were drawn quite often were drawn, in my opinion, with the intention to create an impossible situation for the future stability of that imaginary state, right? So you're like, you've got, you've got like Nigeria where there's, there's dozens of languages spoken, mm -hmm. dozens of ethnic groups and uh, a political system that can't or, or, find, or would find it very difficult to mediate between the various interests, right? And that kind of thing happened all over the, all over the, all over the colonized world, right? So, you know, okay. Somalia still lacks maybe 40% of its territory, which was given to Kenya and, um, and, 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 uh, and, and Ethiopia, right? Just arbitrarily gifted to, um, to other countries, despite the fact that the overwhelming majority, I'm talking over 95% of the population in those lands, um, would identify as being Somali. Um, and in each yeah, that would be deeply, deeply insulting and upsetting for people. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you look at the hotspots in the world today, you know, um, Somalia and Ethiopia had several wars over that, over, over that territory. Uh, Nigeria had the Biafra Wars. Um, you've got Kashmir, which is another example of incredibly cynical diplomacy to create a, a long-lasting uh, situation of destabilization along ethnic and sectarian lines. I'm not making value judgments on who's right and who's wrong, by the way. You know, I, I've got nothing against Ethiopians, for example, as a Somali. I, you know, I, 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 you know, would prefer to have grown up in, or my family to have grown up in the Ethiopian side. You know, they they did the Somalis on that side of the border actually did probably better off than the ones on this side of the border, right? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not making any kind of like uh, um, a, a value judgment, really. Um, then, then you've got the, you know, so at that point. People looked to, you know, in, in, in situations of destabilization, uh, where in the early 60s there was this real enthusiasm for, dem for democracy, right? All yeah. across Africa. And then military coups started propping up and military dictators mm -hmm. started emerging, often with the backing of, like, you know, various Western intelligence agencies. Um, yeah. who then just went sick on, on, on the populations that they repressed, right? So then you've got an, a, a, an immigration crisis. Perhaps when you say sick, sick's got multiple meanings and opposite meanings. What do you mean? Like... Oh, I mean, I mean, literally and figuratively behaved in a disgusting manner, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, okay. uh, where am I? I lose my train of thought a lot, man. You might have to just like do little blends, you know, okay. just like cut those 20 seconds of like staring into the abyss out of it, man. Because otherwise people are going to think I'm an absolute mong head. <laughs> well, but neither of us are feeling very well today. So um, yeah. hopefully people will cast some credit. You're talking about, you were talking about Ethiopia. And then right, ah, so you got your Idi Amin's and your various other dictators, Latin in Latin America, in you know, in in uh, in East Asia, in 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 Africa, 
in the Middle East, you know, who are all kind of supported by various intelligence agencies who are making life unbearable for the people who live there. So what an example do? of that. An example of that would be the Shah in, in Iran, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely the Shah in Iran, uh Saddam in Iraq, right? Okay. Um, the Assad family in Syria, Gaddafi in Libya. You don't matter where you go, like you know, Ali Abdullah Saleh in Yemen. Pure dictators who, you know, when it's convenient, will do business with them, support them, yeah. sell them weapons, sell them arms. And then um, when we no longer have a need for that convenience, then we kind of ostracize them, invade their countries, take more of their shit. A pattern. This is a, this is a clear pattern, right? Um, some would argue that the whole post-colonial uh, drama was just that, you know, just theatre, political theatre. Nothing was ever really, no power was ever really relinquished. Right? So would you say? Would you say that all this, all this, all this manipulation led, uh, of the continent, or of more of several continents, really, led to uh, simultaneously a massive resentment towards the countries doing the carving up, and also a massive wish to go and live in them because they you could you could practice your religion without being killed, or you know. Right, so it is is the is the funny thing, right? Um, when I talk to my auntie who's in the UK now, um, in the eighties she worked for the Red Cross in uh, in Mogadishu. She had a really good job. Um, you know, she was is educated. She, which, which auntie is this? Sorry, what? Um, the Irish auntie? No, nah, no, nah, it's my mum's sister. All right, that was that was really freaking me out. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah no. Go on, I, go on. Yeah, okay. my mum's sister. Yeah, so she she was uh, she had a really good job. She had a diploma, which was um, you know quite a high level of, of education for for that time. Um, yeah, and and in that kind of environment, and you know she had a, a managerial job as an accountant for the Red Cross, was supporting five or six families um, wow. on her salary as well as her own. And um, she had absolutely no intention whatsoever, yeah, of ever leaving Somalia. None. Yeah. None whatsoever. But like, you know, the great the great game was visited upon that part of the world with um, the Soviets and the Americans vying for influence and um, an absolute pair of mugs for dictators on either side. Mengistu in uh, in Ethiopia and Siadvere in Somalia, and mm -hmm. uh, a, a cross border war involving like Cubans and Soviets and Yemeni soldiers and all kinds of uh, all kinds of madness really ended up in in a massive military defeat for Somalia, and then the dictator turned on his own people. Um, right. and, and, you know, a genocide ensued in the north, which she had to escape from, and uh, which started the process of mass migration out of, out of Somalia, right? Um, right. So coming back to my granddad, my granddad wasn't an immigrant, mm -hmm. right? Granddad was a student on a student visa from a pretty affluent class of Somalis, an educated class of Somalis, like, who had no intention of staying in the UK and didn't, right? Um, mm. uh, he, he met my gran, had my dad, but him and my dad went back to Somalia. Right. right? And, um, you know, he worked in government, um, had businesses, had a, had a good life, had no intention whatsoever of, of ever coming to France or, or the UK again, really. Um, but my dad came back to England, to the country of his birth, in the late 70s, um, as a British citizen, right? Grafted, worked, went back, married my mum, had us in the 80s, and I, I, there wasn't really a Somali community in the UK at that time. 
Yeah. But Somalis came here when it was just too fucked to live in Somalia, right? And well, you have you have actually you've actually been been there several times, but yeah, the stuff you hear, no government, rogue state, uh, the footage you see, obviously it's no simplification, but no joke place to be, and you, and you went there, didn't you, a few times? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, going to Somali land in the north, which is an unrecognized, uh, democratic, relatively peaceful uh, country is a cakewalk compared to going to uh, Mogadishu and the south. Mogadishu right? is the capital, capital, right? Capital of Somali proper. I mean, we, we, we don't have anything to do with, um, with, with, with Somalia, per se, right? We kind of fought for our independence and um, have, have been self-governing since 1991. Right. Um, again, on colonial lines, right? So... The, the territory now called Somaliland, which is where my family are from, is the old British Somaliland. And the territory that um, we fought against, the people we fought against for our independence were those who were colonised by the Italians, right, in what was called Italian Somalia, right? Doesn't, the, have, a ring, doesn't, have, a ring to, doesn't have a ring to it, that. Right, it doesn't, it doesn't. British Somali land sounds banging, you know. Yeah. Just, just yeah, yeah. Chalk, that up, chalk that up to another thing. We, 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 Even on the uh -huh. Somali, Somali Fronte isn't, isn't so bad, but you throw in the Italians and it's just a mess. Well, Somali Fronte is, is Djibouti, so you went right. wrong there, man. There is a Somali Fronte, right? We, we, got, we, did, we got carved up, man, three ways uh, by, by European powers. And and here's, this is the point I want to make now on, on, on the whole, like, kind of migrant situation into Europe, right? Um, those that were colonized, like, so for, for Somalis, those that were colonized by the French, right, went to France mm. when shit got peak in their country. Those that were colonized by the Italians, by and large, went to Italy. Those that were colonized by the British came to Britain. Right, because there's some uh, cultural affinity. There's some cultural transference that's happened. There's yeah. there's a, a there's a, a a competency with the language. There's yeah, just, I was going to say, it. yeah, language, um, reli religious thinking, customs, philosophy, all sorts wrapped up in oh, that. Man. Absolutely, and and um, you know, when I was in Spain, you you know, you'll find. A lot of people from the poorer Latin American countries that are there, right? Because yeah. they were colonized yeah. by the Spanish. And they all speak Spanish. Yeah. And they all speak Spanish. So, like, to, to, to say that we aren't living in a kind of consequential uh, situation where, the, you know, this, this is partially the effect of, of, the, colon of, of the colonial. Uh, adventure, you know, is naive. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I think um, right. So that's kind of on a on a macro scale, right? The kind of the bigger picture. Now, I grew I grew up in you know in a working class, poor, white, British neighbourhood, right? I can, I can confirm this. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmed. Right. <laughs> Now, what? Why do they? Why would anybody on the estate I grew up on give a shit about the history that I've just described there? Right? When the argument that all these immigrants are flooding this little island, yeah, taking all our shit, um, busting us up, blowing us up, grooming our girls. Um, they have no respect for our culture, our traditions, our customs, our history, our people, our language, etc., etc. Right? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, why would anybody who holds those grievances give a shit about the history? Right? It seems that out, out there in the public like, ether, in in the zeitgeist, it seems as either that approach 
totally mm. against immigration. Or the sort of libtards, as you'd probably call them, like uh, they don't know anything, they're just passively apologetic to everything. And, and they're like, yeah, everyone come here all at once. Um, it's, it's all great. Um, like Justin Trudeau, he wouldn't close the borders with a gun to his head. And he has, he has the word coronavirus and 20 seconds later, it's like, <laughs> shut. But he's banned flights from uh, other countries into Canada. So it's, uh, yeah, quite, a, quite amazing thing going through that. I, I, think, I think it's, um, it's, impo- it's important not to patronise people that have those grievances, right? Because I've, I mean, again, coming back to personal experience, it's it's not a uniquely white or a uniquely European or a uniquely, you know, Anglo, Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-American reaction, right? Yeah. You know, it's happening. It happens all over the world. Right. All over the species, there's a fear of the other, the outgroup, yeah. and all that. Absolutely, absolutely, man, absolutely. I mean, like, I've told you this story many times before. I was in a, I was in a coffee shop in Hergesa, which is the capital of the uh, uh, de facto independent Somaliland, right? I'm in a yeah. coffee shop, and I'm hearing, like, some people speaking in a, in a kind of accented English, right? So I know they ain't been there very long. Mm. And, um, but long enough to feel like they're better than the locals, right? And, and, and long enough to feel like they're better than the, the Oromo. The Oromo is, a, um, is, a, is an ethnic group um, who are based in Ethiopia. And the oppression that they were subjected to in Ethiopia was so shit that they moved to, that they immigrated to Somaliland. Just imagine that, right? <laughs> Between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. I mean, there you go, man. Right. So, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I've lost my footing. Right. So I'm, I'm there now, you know, sipping a, a, a coffee. Very nice Ethiopian coffee beans. Enjoying that. And uh, the waiter is uh, is an Oromo man, right? And in this table of, like, people chatting in their broken English, starts going on about how there's too many Oromo and they've took all the jobs and standard spiel, right? Yeah, it's from standard spiel. And... I mean, you know me, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not one to uh, hold my tongue. Unfortunately, it's got me into more trouble than it's worth, really. But I just turned to him and said, "Like, are you for real? Like, are you actually fucking for real? You're gonna chat the exact same shit that people talk, people say, people think, people feel when they see you walking down their streets." in Birmingham, Sheffield, London, Manchester, Liverpool, wherever you live, right? Like, how incoherent is that? How hypocritical is that? Like, if you feel... It's interesting interesting to talk to you about it because you've seen it through these different lenses. Like, you said you went um, to certain countries and and the the racial prejudice there was was on a higher, a much higher level than what you've seen in England, you know, towards other, towards... And no one in, in, in any of these parties was white. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's more it's yeah. more complicated than people think. Um, that's for sure. Um, you know what? Like, I, I was seven years old. Yeah, I got knocked off my bike crossing the road, and this is the, so. This is like nineteen ninety three, right? When we were seven. Which country? England. This this is the country of Hull, Kingston upon Hull, right? Um, which is a country to on its to its own, Perfect. and uh, it is, man. So anyhow, right, I'm, and do you know what? Miraculously, because I've got several guardian angels, yeah. you can't go to places I go and walk out unscathed, right, if you ain't got some serious backup, you know. So I've done a full-on somersault in the air with the bike still attached to my body, right? I'm just doing all kinds of madness. Land, like one of them Olympics, give him a 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, on my ass. But like bouncing, doing, I'm, I'm good. 
just really shocked and shaken. And I look up, yeah, and they open down the windows, and it's a girl. I can remember to this day, it's a girl. There's a geezer in the next side, some people in the back. And the girl, right, goes, Watch where you go going, you packy bastard. <laughs> and off they went. And I mean, that was a fucking huge violation, right? Seven years old, man. Do you know what I mean? So I used, you know, I learned about physics through racism in Hull, right? You know, like the, the Doppler shift, right? You know, I mean, Mr. Bell never had to explain the Doppler shift to me because I fucking knew that shit early, man. I'd, exper- I'd, I'd done that in the field experimentally. You know, you get a car going by, you're going, run, fuck you, Again, again, again. You know, I learned that shit, man, early. How does that, how does that, you're a seven-year-old kid on the streets of Hull. How do you feel when that is said to you for the first time? How do you feel when you come home to a multi-ethnic family you didn't know race? My grand's white. My dad's half white. My brother's a lot lighter than me. My mum's dark. Right? I've got a white uncle. And white cousins. Do you You're get black me? sheep. Well, we were all fucking black sheep and white sheep and you know brown sheep and fucking you know a mixed bag of sheep. In 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 the I didn't I didn't know colour until I went to school. You know what I mean? Yeah. Until I until I walked out the house, right? So yeah, I, I had a lot of resentment, and that resentment drove me to this like uh, imaginary place of I'm Somali. Never been there. Don't know what the yeah. fuck it means, right? Don't know anything about the country apart from what my mum has told me and she left when she was fucking 18, so there's not a lot she knew, right? Rose-tinted, maybe. Rose-tinted, man. Rose-tinted, yeah? And, you know, that was that was my refuge. You know what I mean? When we'd be out on a night out and there'd be some beef... And man's just start talking about packy this or nigga that or black bastard this or that. And it wasn't all the time. I'm not going to go on like it was all the time. It wasn't. I love Hull. And I, there's not a place I couldn't walk in Hull. And you know that. I could go anywhere in Hull and I was good. You know what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, I love that city. But I, think, I, think, I do think a lot of that is because, especially in East Hull, like, I think a lot of that is because you're... you're a very ethical person and actually I don't know if you want how much you want to disclose but I know for a fact you prevented a very very horrible thing happening to a woman and paid a very very heavy price for it um you're not the sort of person to take any crap uh, do, do, do you think that was it as well or or do you think in, in there's just there's a, there's a high level of tolerance in Hull I really don't know about East Hull <laughs> where my grandma lived uh, uh, yo, I never used to like going to East Hull I'll be honest with you man I used to stay on yeah. the west side of the bridge. Because he, he used side. to get shown, shown of the dead the minute you cross that hole in this bridge. It's like the sun don't shine on the east side of the hole, man. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like fucking the, the walking dead over that side. No offence to any of the east or people. You know I've got love for you all. Um, but like... But, but you need to, you, you need to, you need to um, keep tidy up house. Um, shit. Yeah. I think it was uh, someone close to you actually saying he was in East Hull and within about five seconds, you know, the, the abuse started. Um, they were running towards him and he was waiting for this bus. It was like, please come, please come, please come. And they literally, literally got like two or three seconds spare and, and managed to, uh, to, uh, to escape. To escape. Um, Man, no, it, it, what it's I'm tr- getting at is like I, 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 I saw it even like the racial abuse for want of a better term you'd get like do you think when you how, how much how much of that was 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 connected to how you were like walking around or presenting yourself or what mood you're in and how much was just pure pure bigotry pure knee-jerk bigotry well it is the thing right so All right, how am I going to put this? I actually think it was most of it was quite like now, in with hindsight, it was pretty benign, right? I'll be honest with you, right? It was it was pretty benign, right. and 
you know, when you get older and you, and you kind of, um, you kind of, you know, you, you reflect on things from, from more, or you try to reflect on certain things from more than just your own kind of heavily involved perspective, right? I, mean, I remember, like, my best mate at primary school, I'm going to say his surname, but he's called Phil. And uh, I must have called him like a ginger cunt or something like that, right? Yeah. He called me a packy bastard. Right. And then, like, you know, and I, I was fully violated by that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you know, bit. like, you know, he, he, he didn't have a fucking racist bone in his body. Right, the guy, the guy was absolutely wicked, but obviously, like, it's a if I'm gonna punch you, you're gonna punch me back, right? Yeah. And you're gonna use whatever you want, you whatever you've got at your disposal to do the maximum damage. You know what I mean? But like, for me, it was it was just I was constantly on the defensive about about the racism, not seeing yeah. that like he could be equally as fucked up about being called a ginger cunt, right? As I would be about being called a packy bastard, and yeah, we just well, think... his his um his insults at least accurate. Your yours isn't even getting the right continent. Yo, I used to be happy when I'd be called black something or nigger because I was like, yo, man, <laughs> come on, please, like at least at least <laughs> it's in the right continent. I was gassed. I'd be really gassed when 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 when, when you know the. The racism would fit the fit the term, man. I mean, yeah. like the worst one was when you know I, I, there was about a six month period where it was like in vogue to call me a Kosovan bastard. I was like, there's no there's no black people in Kosovo. I don't think, not many. Can't be many. Anyhow, they weren't even they weren't they weren't Kosovans in Hull either. But I mean, that, that's bad. Oh. That bad point. <laughs> Didn't you uh, have numbers on that? Like yeah. it, it used to be like bloody bloody Kosovans ruined Hull, and you actually knew the numbers on how many Kosovans that ever lived in Hull. Ever, I think it was like eighteen, something mad like that. Yeah, <laughs> like, not eighteen hundred, not eighteen thousand, just eighteen. Eight, no, it was it was it was definitely a teen number between thirteen and nineteen. It was fucking tiny, insignificant, but like the media had got hold of it and. You know, there might have been people who looked like Kosovans, perhaps to the untrained eye, maybe um, kind of Middle Eastern or whatever people. But like, yeah, yeah, I, it's just crazy. But anyhow, the point I'm trying to make is right. Like growing up where I did, I had guys who I know were rough, like really rough guys, man. But they liked me, you know. Mm. And like, I, I learned most of like the the kind of in racist terms off them because they put their arm around my shoulder and be like, "Oh, you're Sam, mate, you're fucking all right, yo. You're, you're fucking good, yo, mate. Yeah, yeah listen, anyone ever calls you a bleep, 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 <laughs> Honestly, man, it was like going to fucking uh, school, man. I learned all kinds of shit off those guys, but they meant it though. That's the thing, they meant it. They meant like, yo, I got your back, right? I got your back. You're all right. And I think at the end of the day, really and truly, for me, it's like they got fuck all in hole, man. You know, people have got nothing, and the media very, very carefully. Um, this is the point. This is the kind of grand point I'm going to make. I'm going to save it to the end, right? All right, because the the, the race war. We're not near is, the end. Ah, we're not near the end. Carry on. No, the no, race war. No. Yeah, like uh, the kind of like I don't want to call it race war. I mean, like the kind of the whole focus on race and religion and, and all of that, right? Though there are some very significant and very important uh, kind of. Um, resolutions that have to be made right yeah but like for me it's it's about class right and the main reason why we're in a situation that we're in now is um is to distract is to distract the working class people from wherever in the world right 
and by working class, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you ain't owning shit, not your house or your car, like you ain't owning big factories and the factors of production, right? Pardon the 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 kind of Marxist jargon, but if you ain't if you're not a industrialist, if you ain't got real real productive power at your disposal, then you're working class. I don't care if you're working for like in finance, I don't care if you're a hotshot lawyer, like you you one or two economic crises from joining the fucking poor queue with everybody else. If there's a chance of you hitting that queue, you ain't got shit. Right? Yeah. And and everything is a distraction from that. From the fact that a handful of people own far, far, far too much, man. And that's really simplistic. And I know I've made it as simplistic as maybe far, maybe a little too simplistic, but that's just my personal oh, belief, man. There's a reason Eisenhower, right? Who you'll know much more about than that. Sam has a photographic moment for history. It's really quite annoying when trying to get the point across. Um, so President uh, Eisenhower. <laughs> President Eisenhower, right? In his closing his closing address. He's five, he was a five-star general. He's been the president for ages. People love him. The last thing he said, right? The last thing he said was beware of the very dangerous uh, military industrial complex that's sort of gone rogue and beware of giving it powers, whether warranted or unwarranted. And that's where real dice are thrown. At that, yeah. that sort of level. And, you know, you're talking, I, I, you know, we're talking about the military industrial complex. Like, there's not a war that's gone on, really, in the last 40, 50 years that's not been encouraged or benefited or profited by those that run those uh, those industries, you know. And yeah, that, that, that's, that's an incredible... Sickness, sickness, sickness is very lucrative and, and war is very lucrative, just a, just a fact. Hell yeah. And you know what? You know what's interesting, right? Like, so coming back to whole, the whole, like, I mean, I'm blurring now between immigration, migration, race, whatever, and 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 you know, sorry for, sorry for people who are kind of thrown or bored by all of that, but that's just how I'm wired. But like, you know, it, it, you you come onto the farmer, big farmer, right, and not just big farmer, but kind of, kind of drugs. So, a lot of black people felt that the whole crack epidemic, right, in yeah. in in America in the in the eighties and then the nineties, right, was a war against black people, right? Simple as. And I'm not going to yeah. get into the, you know, the, the factual <laughs> the basis for that, but, um, you know, it, 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 this, this, there's a very strong argument to suggest that there were some very malign intentions behind the kind of uh, spreading of, of this new wonder drug, you know, into, into kind of ghetto areas. But Do you know... Whole- so, do you Just, know what do you know what city uh, methamphetamine was synthesized in? I don't, mate. No. Wuhan, in China. Interestingly, interestingly enough, but yeah, crack cocaine. Okay, I have heard things about. There's all kinds of, of um, things that aren't cons- like depopulation things and culling of the homeless in the night. There's, there's all kinds of things do go on. There are a lot of made up conspiracy theories. Of, Things as well. Conspiracy is a word attached onto things to make it sound discreditable. But um, JFK, I, I, when he's one conspiracy theories, man, I, I deal with history. Yeah, but yeah. conspiracy has become a dirty word. Like JFK in his one of the greatest speeches ever, just before he got shot in the head from an acrobatic bullet, <clears throat> it was warning, warning the world about the power of the monolithic secret societies, and said, I quote. There is a conspiracy. Dot dot. I went on to give that speech, and and died soon after. Um, I don't ma- want to get either in, tr- in trouble. And there's no editing in this, so it's all live. So I w- don't say anything you regret because I really enjoy this conversation. I don't want to have to uh, delete this. Uh, right. <laughs> Sam. All right, Sam. What? We- ah! <laughs> what? When people arrive in the UK, right? From, yeah. from East Africa. When people arrive in the UK from Somalia, let's say, no, no, you, no. you'll know this. Let me stop you there, please. Uh, forgive me for this, but I've got to make that point on the on the crack cocaine, right? Because people no. thought it was just a, a war against black people, right? But the 
opioid uh, epidemic with prescription mm. drugs that have been proven to fuck people and communities up, right? Particularly poor white communities in America, right? Which How dare you? Has had How, dare you? How dare you point that out? Racism. No, the point. The, the point I'm the, the point I'm trying to make is it's bigger than race. It's yeah, bigger than yeah. race. it's always been class. It's always been about class, right? And you know, the the, the mere fact that no one gives a shit, right? And there's that documentary on Netflix now about the whole kind of opi opioid uh, addiction madness in America. In fact, no one gives a fuck about the poor whites in America, right? Yeah, you know, is 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 the best kind of support that I can point to right now, to the fact that like you could read the entire last hundred hundred fifty years of history, whether it be colonization of 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 these uh, uh, kind of um, well of the world, right? The whole post colonial settlement migration into the West, right, by those populations, which was encouraged. Right? So let's not get it twisted. Uh, Caribbean, Asian, particularly from Pakistan, right? They were, were invited to the UK, right? They were the lorry. Right? And, but the thing is, like, yo, if I'm going to invite you to my house, Rob, I got to tell the missus first, right? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I got to tell the kids, I listen, just to let you know, Rob's on his way. Right, if you're gonna come to stay, then I gotta make space for you. Do, do, do you know what I'm saying? I gotta say, right, I right, listen, everybody in the house, right, Rob's coming. Yeah, he's got some strange customs, right? He's a bit he's a bit different, but he's a good kid, right? And I kind of like mashed his house up, so i you know, he's kind of gotta stay with us, right? But don't worry, he's all right. <laughs> He'll... You've, got, you've got away with away with talking to kids, I'll give you that. <laughs> Right, so you know, it's that's just the what you know. For me, people people came here invited by the elites, yeah, right, and they were dropped into communities that had no way of preparing for them. Hence, the resentment from the local populations, right? Yes, you talk to what you talk to an old Caribbean person or an old Pakistani, what it was like, yeah, when they when they came here in the fifties, sixties. You know, it was shit, man. Yeah, you know well, I mean? like, 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 literally, uh, I hate to use the term, but Paki bashing was, was van fulls of people pulling up, attacking individual um, people that weren't white or small groups of them with kebab knives, and it was no joke. It was, it was really yeah. awful. No, and then, and then what happens in the 80s, you have riots from the kids of those people, right, who were like, fuck this, I'm not getting, I'm not getting Paki bashed. I'm not getting stabbed up or jumped up or, you know, fucked about by the police in the country I was born in that my parents were invited to by the country that colonised us. Do you get what I'm saying, right? And then, so, <laughs> like, there's resentment both ways. But who's benefited? You know, that's why, that's why I always come back to that, what, I can't even remember the, the fucker's name, man, but on the wire, what does he say? Follow the money. Follow the money, right? Who's benefited well, from ben all of it? Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. If, if, I mean, if he said that, then he's copying my guy from uh, from The Wire, man. Well, the, the Daily Wire is on my... Do you mean The Wire, the TV show, or The Daily Wire online? That's Ben oh. Shapiro, a Jewish guy. The TV show, man. The Wire. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, Different clearly that's the thing. best person ever to have said it, but, like, for me, that's the, that's the motherfucker who originated that scene. The Wire. The guy after why? What's his name anyway? I don't Fuck know. It. I don't know if I've, if I've seen it. <laughs> so, so I, I, I wouldn't put it past. Look, look. If the government's sending anthrax in the mail, I wouldn't put it past them coming up with a uh, with crack cocaine. So, Sam, when people arrive, when people you've known or seen have arrived in the UK, what, yeah, what's the, what, what are the main mental health issues that are, that are ignored or mishandled? Whoa! You got time? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, 
All right, I mean that. If... Or two, or two. How about two? Okay, I mean like post-traumatic stress disorder. Let's start there, right? And why is that, the people? Why is that? Nearly every one of my uncles and aunties. Right. And any and by you know, when you're talking uncles and aunties in Somalia, like we're like gypsies, man. We've yeah. got thousands, you know. What I mean, we don't fuck around, like and it's not like my mum and dad's siblings. Like a, a, a guy'll be an uncle to me and we don't we you know, we meet 10, 20 generations ago, right? You see what I'm saying? It's like um it's like the royal family, they all know each other, man, going back Charlemagne, so do we, right? So uh, it's a kind of yeah, a just to uh, just to defend your bloodline, um, not quite in the same incestuous uh, vibe as the royal family, or the same Nazi vibe, as, you know, to be frank, as the, as the royal family. Mm, well, I mean, the, the thing is, like, no, we would have been. This is the point. We would have been. We would have looked like we, we would have been. You guys were just better at doing it, man. You got there a few hundred years before we were able to, like, invent guns and ships and do all of that shit. Like, no. I, I, this is this is what going around the world has taught me, man. Like, the, right. the West, but everybody else would have done the same shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't being a libtard then. I was just, I was just, um, I know you I wasn't, just trying to prop up. I know you're not capable of being one, but, like, um, whatever, whatever that would be. Uh, but like I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying like it's important to it's important to recognize, yeah. Like there's a historical there's a historical debt that is owed, right? Factually, okay. but also as a species, unfortunately, we have to recognize, right, that these like kind of unpleasant tendencies and these unpleasant in- instincts are there within us all, right? Yeah. And I don't think any one nation or power has got a monopoly on being shit right and it's only by recognizing that that it can that you won't be in a coffee shop in somalia chatting the same shit that someone's going to say to you or say behind your back in starbucks in london you see what i'm saying like you know you, you yeah. it's only one that you can truly attempt even to be fucking consistent you know by yeah. both ideologically ethically morally whatever right spiritually all of it it yeah. makes me think of, uh, of, I know meme has become a kind of like gif, but it really like, you know, Richard Dawkins' idea of it being like a, like a, not virus, but like a, a, by ideas that travel. And the fact that someone can be sat there in that coffee shop spouting the exact same uh, xenophobic hostility that they will then themselves receive in a different part <laughs> of the world. Um, it, oh, it kind of strengthens the idea of, of the memes and um, mind viruses, do you think? Well, I, I, yo, I gave up on all, I gave up on on life when Buddhist monks started chatting all that darkness. You know what I mean? And and fucking up them Rohingya. You know, and they're there talking that stuff on Facebook. We're talking Buddhist monks, man. Like mm-hmm. it's game over when you got Buddhist monks that are on that madness. So look, it, it it's just it doesn't matter what the dressing is. It's like if you you know it's it's what's inside the person, and you got yeah. absolute absolute cunts everywhere, man. And I don't use that word like you got yeah. and they're everywhere, you know. And coming back to the whole racism thing, right? The worst racism I've ever experienced isn't and it's not the UK, and I'd, I would have I would never believe that. Like 16, 17, 18 years of age, right when. I was kind of old enough to start forming my own opinions of the world, but not old enough to have travelled really, right? And having gone, having been very fortunate, right, and blessed to have seen a lot of a lot of different places, to be able to form a more a more kind of comprehensive opinion. Yeah, we yeah. got it real nice here, man. We got it real nice here, yeah. man. And people are real nice here. People are really fucking decent here, man. That's UK. The truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. The UK. The UK. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The UK. UK. People are good, man. People are good. So PTSD. And, uh, PTSD. PTSD. How, is it, how is it mishandled? Well, look, like, I, I mean, I work, I work in Saudi Arabia, right? I'll, come, yeah. I'll start there. They've got an immigration policy, which is like, you can never be Saudi. Ever. 
Like if you were, if you're not Saudi, you ain't gonna become Saudi. Yeah. You can come and work in Saudi Arabia. You can have a work visa if we need you for a specific job, right? And we will pay you when they pay you. We will pay you better than what you get paid in your own country, whether that be Myanmar, Bangladesh, Canada or America, whatever, right? And everything in between. Um, and, you know, I've met people who were born there who aren't Saudi, but they were born there, right? They've grown up there. Arabic is their only language. The culture is their culture. They know nothing else, but they have access. To, their, their, their access is limited. And quite, you know, quite clearly, there's a lot of resentment. But, uh, and, and again, I don't want to make a value judgment, right? Anybody fucks around, makes, you know, uh, gets involved in any kind of criminal activity, they go to jail to get deported. Hmm. Right, because they weren't, they were, you know, you could be there 30 years, model citizen, fuck up, they're kicking you out. Right? Um, on the flip side, if I get ill at work, right, if I have a, a breakdown, for example, right, I have a nervous breakdown, or I, I, get, I get seriously ill, right, God forbid, they're sticking me on a plane. <laughs> Not my problem. Off you go. Right now, again, I don't want to make a value judgment. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an example. It's one very extreme way of dealing with um, the challenges of integrating people who have had their like a whole range of experiences that you might find very difficult to process. Right, particularly if those experiences are kind of um, based in in the traumas of war. Right. So you think that the traumas are not only are hugely underestimated by many people, but are, are impossible to imagine because they've not experienced war? Yeah, I think so, man. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, um, well, I, I'll put it like this, right? I've not experienced war. Thank God. Right? I've never experienced anything close to war. But like growing up around people who have had post-traumatic stress disorder who find it impossible to process it in a healthy way within their own culture, right? Because of conceptions of, of, uh, of, of masculinity, conceptions of, of strength, conceptions of uh, health and mental health, right? Um, are, are unable to process it in a way that is, is meaningful uh, and productive for their lives, right? So my generation right. of kind of British Somalis, we've all, we've all grown up in that shadow. We've all grown up in the shadow of like looking at uncles and aunties who are fucked. You know what I mean? Like emotionally, psychologically damaged goods, right? And have no way of processing that. And actually do a fucking decent job of it, man. You know, really and truly, like, do a really decent job of it, you know, given the severity of what they've experienced. Now, like, people who want to come to the UK have got to do, like, a life in the UK test, right? That I fail as a historian, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I did the mock and I fucking failed it, right? And I want to challenge... I know. Sam, Sam studied the history at a very good, uh, very good university. Um, but yeah, so you failed. You failed the, the sort of nationality exam. <laughs> I failed it, mate. Right? I failed it, and I will, I, I will challenge anyone to pass that shit first time, without without going through the book, without like studying for it. Like, it will tie you up in knots. It's it's, it's a rote learning, difficult exam. I felt no British, no more British at the end of doing it, right? And no more integrated. And I know my wife had to revise for it and could probably now recall one or two of the facts, right? Meaningless. Fucking meaningless, right? Um, what, if you're going to open your doors to a population, right? For whatever reason, 
whether it be humanitarian, whether it be economic, whatever. There needs to be some understanding where about you know where they've come from. Like in Germany, they just let three million, I don't know how many million actually, don't call me on that, but millions of Syrians, right? When the neighboring Arab countries refuse to do so. Mm. So like in terms of like the, the humanitarian profile, one nil to Germany. The decency profile, one nil to Germany, right? But where did these people come from? Came from the. Well, a, a, um, well, it's a myth. They're just from Syria. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, that, oh, that's, that's actually what it goes on. That's what it goes on. But, but most of the countries that they're coming from are, are, are pretty booky anyway, man. Whether it be Afghans pretending to be Syrians or Iraqis yeah. pretending to be Syrians or whatever, like, you know. Most of them will have come from a country where, like, they, they, they're bringing with them the traumas that they've experienced. You see what I mean? And I, I know of no attempt even to recognize that, right? So how can you, in, like, if, you know, I'd, I mean, I'd like to see if you're, if you're going to have an immigration, a humanitarian immigration policy, right? Then there needs to be there needs to be an entire process of easing that person into that society, right? So real language support, real language support, access to therapy, access to psych psychiatric treatments, right? And support mm. and follow-up, right? Real follow-up. People just get lost in this. They get lost in the sauce here, man, right? Kafkaesque systems. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, 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 some some demands also to be made that like people don't just get lost in their own little bubble of 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 kind of for want of a better word in their own little ghetto right because I, again I, i've been up and down up and down the uk and some of the poorest areas are kind of drawn along ethnic lines right you know well that's where i worked as a, as a teacher full time in primary schools and secondary schools in east london was Newham was described as a ghetto. It never felt like when it, walking around there, I could tell <clears> there <throat> was the the, genet, the, the, the ethnic, the genetic, um, cultural, religious makeup was different to um, Hull. They didn't. It didn't feel like an abandoned ghetto. But again, then again, you didn't hear much English being spoken in the streets either. Um, I never got. I got. I've got more shit living in Essex and Hull than I ever got in. Um, Live in East London, where I, where I was often the only white person on the street. Um, that that was strange. So, in East London, very very large um, immigrant immigrant population, not just from uh, Africa and Asia, but Eastern Europe as well. But in terms of the mental health, you would see, like in terms of the really broken figures, you'd see screaming to themselves at two in the morning. Um, like, I feel uncomfortable saying it, but I just this is just what my eyes saw. They were, they generally all seem to have um, African descent. Um, I don't know why. I have no idea why. But the what the ones who was the ones who are out there like really losing the plot and screaming um, were. And I, I do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, like you know, I started this whole thing, and you know how uncomfortable I've been, right? To, to come on here because I mean um most people yeah. that most people that kind of that know us would know me to be quite outspoken and whatnot but like I, I'm pretty private man I've I, you know I don't do stuff like this to be honest but um you know I admire what you're trying to do Rob and, and that's why I've come on but I have to stress that I'm, I'm not an authority really like I'm just ex speaking from my own kind of experience and from that experience, the Somalis that I know in cities like London and Bristol, who are walking around the street, talking, screaming, shouting, quite visibly disturbed, mm -hmm. have all got a fucked up backstory. Of course, like, yeah. yeah. They've yeah. all got a really fucked up backstory, man. Like child soldier shit, a lot of them. Yeah. You know, seen some nasty shit, right, at an early age in your life that you've got no mechanism for processing. Such a right. young age as a, like, you know. Yeah, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I work with one guy. The guy's sound. 
the guy is absolutely sound, right? And uh, you would never know that at 10 years of age, he was stepping over the bodies in the city that he's from, Eregabo, having just seen his uncle get shot in the head by the army. You know, he, he, I, you'd nev- I'd never know that he'd been through that. Now, how, yeah. how, how has he managed to process that trauma? I asked him, I said, like, yo, does that, is that, you know, how do, how, do you, how, do you, how do you process that? He's like, well, I close my eyes, I still see my uncle's brains being fucking flung out of his head. Yeah. And his lifeless body dropping to the ground. Right? And he's, I, I can close my eyes and see that shit. Now, some people are just, I just think some people are lucky, man. They found, they found an anchor. They found a way of processing that. They found a way of, of, of kind of uh, mediating between their experience and their, and their present life. Some people just unfortunately have not been able to find what it is that can ground them. You know, John um, Peterson, right? The uh, psychologist. Mm. He's um, formerly of Toronto and before that, um, Harvard. He, he was saying post traumatic stress disorder. He said he's, he's had a lot of patience with it. And the only thing he found to be of any kind of help was. Because right, they've either done something evil and they, and they can't process it, or they've had something evil done to them and they can't process it. <laughs> they, teaching people a philosophy of good and evil, he said, was the only a philosophy of evil was the only thing that helped them come to ter- fully come to terms with it. And, um, and he, he kept hearing from soldiers, apparently, when he put up these lectures. I, I, it, it, it sounds, you know, oh, you've been through all this. Well, don't you know about evil? Uh, but... I thought that was very interesting. How, um, like he gave one example of obviously this is the totally opposite side of what you were talking about, but it was in a, in Canada. This girl, naive girl, the way her boyfriend looked at her for two seconds, right? Had the mal, the, the bad intent in his eyes, the, the malevolence in his eyes, broken for like decades, more than that. She didn't know that that level of malevolence existed, or they existed at all, kind of thing. And suddenly, it, it, two seconds, it came her way, and it broke it, and it, and it broke her. Do, do you think, like, what what do you see has been the best, not, not I don't know if you can fix PTSD or, or complex PTSD, CPTSD, but what have you found to be the best crutches people have found? Well, I'm, um, it is, <laughs> I got a, I've got a couple of uncles, right, who were kind of very young during the, the Civil War in the 80s. And uh, one of them is, is probably a sociopath. Like, he's, he's not, he doesn't live in England. He lives in Somalia, right? But there's absolutely no remorse whatsoever for the shit he did. None. Right? And... The, the geezer seems to have a pretty unaffected life by any of that, you know. Like he will, he will tell, like he will tell people stories about what happened during the war, and you're like, "Fuck!" And he's like laughing and giggling, man. He don't give a, he, like he's. It it just it's really bizarre to see that, right? And then on the. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. Well, well you know, that, that, but it seems like pretty textbook kind of sociopathy, right? Um, just to have processed it all in that way. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the uncles I've got and aunties I've got are pretty spiritual. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they've, they've placed it all within a context, like you say, of kind of, of, um, of, of good and evil. Um, and then I've also found people for whom that doesn't that doesn't work. It doesn't translate. You know, I mean, you often hear that like the yeah. last thing someone says before they go mad is like, you know, I get I see it now. But then they usually start talking about Jesus or the Virgin Mary or God or the devil or you know what I'm saying. So, um, I think well, it's. Uh, I think it's very specific, man. I don't know if uh, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I'm I'm not. I I have to. I keep stressing. I'm not a fucking professional in this, but like a a, 
a professional would be able to ag- answer that question. Maybe maybe there are kind of some cultural specificities or, um, you know, there's been some studies done that show that there's, you know, some efficacy studies where there are more, there are more effective methods or whatever, but like, um, I just think, I just think it's very irresponsible of a government not to acknowledge that like, you know, and, and that's not just that I mean, we're, we're kind of limiting this to to um, the context of immigration, but British soldiers returning from war, um, you know, people who are kind of under the daily stress of of of, of poverty or abuse, who who don't have another kind of cultural frame of reference, you know, we're just just British people who have kind of have had it really tough, like. You know, the entire system we live in, you know, it, it kind of feels like you got to figure it out yourself. If you can't figure it out, then, you know, the factory the factory just discards all the damaged goods, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, and you get, you get thrown down the chute and you, you better fucking figure that shit out or, or, or else we don't give a fuck, you know? Um, you, and I, you and I have a mutual love of um, Nietzsche and Dostoevsky, would you say? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, who both predicted uh, in pretty similar, pr- pretty similar times in pretty different places that if if you ripped out the sort of the cement of, of God um, in in the in the navigation structure people have in their minds, mm. all hell all hell would break loose and we'd oscillate. As Nietzsche put it, like people people misquote. God is dead as some sort of triumphant statement that he was saying yeah. God is dead and there won't be enough um, blood to wash away. There won't be enough water to wash away the blood that runs through the streets. And he said that in the late 1800s and was proven right at least three times I can think of in his own country. <laughs> um, it's, so wait, okay. Um. So you so you were saying basically so you were saying cultural or, or religious um, traditions can help people by giving them an anchor to get to, to get through these issues sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it it seems to have certainly helped some people I know uh, in terms of you know rationalising their trauma. Um, I know some sociopaths. Uh, or people who, who who would kind of fit quite comfortably in that category. Um, yeah. and then, uh, I mean, you know, there's others who just have to work 24 hours a day, work, work, you know, just keep busy, just work, 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 you know, you know, like just, just graft in and then kids help, family helps. I don't know. Again, I, you know, I, I sound like a broken, broken record, but I, I don't really know, man. I, I just see that there's a real gap there. Right when trying to understand um, some of the challenges that communities face uh, in the recognition of some of the kind of mental health challenges, you know, um, yeah. definitely, definitely. I mean, we've got a mental health crisis in the UK anyway. Period. You know, um, and a lot more needs to be done in, re- in recognizing that. You know. Kind of, and, and again, that's why that's why I really, that's why I had to come on the show, Rob. To be honest, man, because I, I think I think one, none of us are experts, right? I don't know if you've had any mental health experts on the show, but like I think probably um, some of them have had uh, challenges, maybe be a, a way of putting it, challenges with their with their mental health, or not people who have struggled with mental health issues and. And um, I think these, you know, this kind of a forum is really important to kind of sketch some of that out. And I've got 5% battery left. So the thing's gone dark. Give me a sec. Just is to, there just a way? Is there a way of boosting the battery? It, it sounds like I'm wrapping up anyway, doesn't it? Let's wrap it up. Can you, um, is there a way of charging your phone where you are now? No, man, I'm outdoors, bro. I'm outdoors, Let's wrap man. it up. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, bro. 
This is the end of part one, people. I hope, I hope you enjoy it. Sam, is there anything in the public domain that you want to bring to people's attention? I, I, you know what? I want to say peace to all the people who I know, you know, particularly people I've not seen for a long time. Uh, I hope everybody's well and healthy. I hope your families are good with this whole coronavirus madness. Um, uh, all views expressed belong to me and me alone. I don't represent a set. I don't represent a people. I don't represent a religion. I don't represent anyone. I'm just me, little old me, um, you know. So if I've made a mistake, like my bad, you know, please don't point to me as an example for anything like that, you know what I mean? All, you know, this is what Somalis think, or this is what British Somalis think, whatever. Nah, this is what Sam thinks, and Sam alone, unless other people share that opinion. Sam, Sam being uh, short for Somalia, yeah? <laughs> Sam being short for Samuel, actually. Yeah. Okay. Samuel and Matar, depending on uh, which granny you ask. All right, well, I'll ask them both uh, immediately. Whilst, whilst your phone's dead, so you can't ring them to um to take up the <laughs> take up the air. Anyway, dude, I don't, I'm not going to ring you, Grant. Th thanks again for doing this. Um, I'm going to press stop recording. Sometimes it takes a second. Sometimes it takes five. But um, yeah, guys, let us know what you think in the in the comments. Um, Sam does not represent all black people, all Somali people. I do not represent all white people or English people. Sam does represent all white people and all English people, and I do represent all black people and all Somali people. So, on that confusing note, see you later. Bye-bye.